first uh, new inductee in the class of 2014 uh, is Mr. John Duncan Jr. and his presenter is Coach Joe Moon. This is a little bit, this is, this is a little bit like deja vu all over again because I got to do this three years ago for Brian uh, McMonagle and uh, I'm just have to say that one of the highest honors that any coach can receive receive is being asked by one of his former athletes as they're being inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, Johnny had a number of outstanding coaches while he was here at New Richmond. Ron Berg, Greg Hawkins, Brian Benzinger, John Calebs, to name a few. I'm sure there were others. So I just want to take a moment to thank Johnny for allowing me the tremendous honor and privilege of introducing him tonight as he is deservedly inducted into the New Richmond High School Hall of Fame for his outstanding basketball and baseball careers. Of course, I'm going to talk about most of the basketball uh, and give you some of the stats on baseball. Um, but the first quality that comes to mind when I think back on Johnny's playing career is, is just intensity. You know, every competitor has a will to win, and, and Johnny had a fiery passion to succeed. Uh, sometimes very fiery, but he, he learned to control that uh, as he got a little older and uh, just did an outstanding job. Um, in his junior and senior year and sophomore year for us and uh, just was wonderful to work with. Probably my fondest, one of my fondest coaching memories was watching Johnny bank in the buzzer beating game winning shot against our rival Hillsboro that brought New Richmond its only men's league basketball championship in the last 37 years. And I just put the pressure on Mr. McMonagall. It's been 19 years since we won and it was 19 years prior to that that uh, the 1960s, what year was that? Uh, I'm, I'm a mathematician here, but 19 years before that. Um, so that team was down eight with about a minute to play. And as New Richmond Lions will do, they fought and scrapped and clawed to come back and tie the game. Um, as time was running down, I still see it in my mind and uh, still have it on the uh, highlight video. But Johnny calmly rose on his jump shot and just like his dad had taught him in their driveway, as soon as Johnny could throw a ball up to the hoop, he used the glass and banked in the game winner as time went out. I don't know how many of, the, of you were at Hillsboro that night. Yeah. Mr. Bird was my assistant coach, and uh, I think that's the highest I've ever seen him jump. Uh, it was about an inch and a half. Uh, but there was a huge pile of New Richmond Lions on the court at Hillsboro that night, and I just want to thank Johnny for that fond memory of, uh, and, and his dad for teaching him how to shoot that bank shot, uh, that left-handed bank shot that we all remember so well. The second factor was Johnny's ability to score. Uh, as you heard already, he led the city of scoring as a senior, averaging 25.8 points a game. During his three years of uh, varsity player, he had nine of the top 17 highest scoring games, including two games of 38 points which tied, Mr. Doug asked, for the individual game scoring record. Johnny finished his career as the second leading scorer in school history behind Doug with 1,241 points, and that was only uh, 12 behind Doug's record. So both those guys were just outstanding scorers. Johnny did more than score. He also averaged 8.9 rebounds per game for his three years, which included 10.4 his senior year, and he averaged 1.8 assists per game um, I know there's a lot of you out there that didn't think he ever passed the ball, but the stats <laughs> prove that he did. So uh, he, he actually was an excellent passer in the post. He had excellent court vision, and he really felt the need to include and get everybody included in, that, in, the, in our offense, and he did a great job of that. He had the highest career scoring average at 25.8 points, uh, like I said, as a senior, and he had the third highest average at 21.9 as a junior. He also had the 8th and 10th highest field goal percentages at 55.2 and 53.3%. He won many awards, some of which you heard earlier, but I'm going to run through them again. Uh, as a sophomore, he was first team All-SBAAC. As a junior, he was first team All-League, All-City, and Area Special Mention for the Ohio Division II All-Southwest District. And as a senior, he was first team All-League, All-City, Ohio Division II first team All-Southwest District and third team All-State. Those are just some of his many accomplishments. In addition to being an outstanding basketball player, Johnny excelled on the baseball diamond. He led the Cincinnati area uh, his senior year with eight wins and 114 strikeouts. 
14th in career wins with 18 and strikeouts with 218. And he was, as uh, you heard earlier, third all-time in strikeouts for seven innings with 10.0. He was chosen first-team All-SBAAC his sophomore through senior years and was first-team All-City his senior year. And as if that weren't enough, he was also chosen to be the SBAAC Player of the Year in two sports two years in a row. He did uh, attend Wright State University on a base Division I baseball scholarship, which is extremely impressive. His intensity and athleticism were just part of the reason that he was such an outstanding basketball and baseball player. I would have to say that the biggest factor in his success was his family, which fills up the whole table over here, which is just incredible. Uh, his mom, Linda, his dad, John, sister, Brandy, and brother, David, um, Uncle Tim, Aunt Sharon, uh, cousin Mindy, um, and I'm sure I'm missing some people there. Uh, they were all extremely supportive of Johnny and New Richmond High School Athletics throughout his career. As you heard earlier, he is the third Duncan to be inducted in the New Richmond Hall of Fame, which is pretty incredible when you consider that the McMonagles and the Duncans grew up on the same street. You have five Hall of Famers that all basically grew up across the street from each other on Beach Cove. So, uh, something in the water, I think, up in, back in the day. So you may want to try and bottle that. Uh, Johnny has his wife, Shannon and their children, Jacob, who is in 8th grade, Lizzie, who is in 5th grade, and Luke, who is in 3rd grade, with him here tonight. It is absolutely my honor and privilege to introduce Mr. John Duncan, an excellent choice for induction into New Richmond's Hall of Fame. John Duncan Jr. was a three-time all-conference performer in baseball and basketball at New Richmond High School and was the first New Richmond athlete to be awarded Southern Buckeye Conference Player of the Year in two sports two years in a row. In baseball, Duncan was a Southern uh, Buckeye Athletic and Academic Conference All-Star three times, was named to the All-City team his senior year after leading the Cincinnati metro area in wins with eight and strikeouts with 114. He ranks fourth both in career wins with 18 and strikeouts 218 and third all-time in strikeouts for seven innings uh, with 10 in basketball. Duncan ranked second at New Richmond in career scoring with 1,241 points. He was named first team All-SBAC three times and All-City his junior and senior year when he led the city in scoring with 25.8 average. He was named to the second team All-District and third team All-State teams as a senior. Uh, Duncan attended Wright State University on a baseball scholarship, joins his father John Duncan Sr and younger brother David Duncan as a member of the New Richmond Lions Sports Hall of Fame. And if you walk down that hallway, you will see that his plaque uh, is hanging down there already in the trophy case. That's why I have to read off the program now because I can't read the little writing on the one that he gets. Uh, but it is with uh, true honor and privilege that I get to uh, give to you Mr. John Duncan Jr. for induction into the Lions Hall of Fame. Here he is. Thank you, everybody. I'm about to raise this up a little bit. It goes up it must be very weak. Yeah, I think that's the size it goes. All right, I'm not very good at speeches, so uh, I've been writing stuff down here uh, the last few weeks on my breaks at work and stuff, so I'm just going to go right into it. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate Jay Penry and Mr. Dennis Cooper on getting into the Hall of Fame. Very, very well deserved. Uh, and also, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for uh, considering me for this uh, honor. I was destined to wear the New Richmond Lions uniform at a very young age. My father, John Duncan Sr., as you all know, does not miss very many New Richmond sporting events. And that started since he graduated from New Richmond High School in 1970. I was told by my mother that I've been attending games from birth, uh, as my dad used to scout for Mr. Reed. Uh, she said I, that was about the best I ever was when I was a baby at the basketball floor, just looking at the ball going up and back. Uh, although I went to Calvert Christian School uh, from first to seventh grade, I did not miss any New Richmond games as I came with my father. Once on the basketball team at Calvary, my dad heard the coach say, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it's just it matters if you're a good sport. Well, on the way home, my father said, son, that is true, you know. It does matter if you're a good sport, but uh, 
he's wrong about the winning and losing part. <laughs> he said it does matter if you win or lose. If, if you don't play to win, you might as well not play at all. Uh, after that, I transferred to the Richmond the following year uh, in the middle school and got to put my first Lions uniform on. I was uh, thrilled. Uh, when I went to the games with Dad when I was a young boy, um, I just remember watching Doug play and I remember watching all the Lions play. And I remember going home and putting my uniform on and uh, going down to the basement and, and reenacting the games, you know. And uh, now my son Luke and Jacob do the same thing after I bring them home from a game. Uh, brings back memories. Okay, here, where am I at? Uh, I've been blessed and honored to play for the most knowledgeable and great coaches in the whole world. In seventh grade football, I got to play for Mr. Ray Forsey Sr. In basketball, I played for John Calebs. He toughened me up and taught me how to play hard and as a team. As I go through these coaches, you're going to hear the same thing uh, that, that was the Richmond way, play hard and play as a team. When I got to high school, I had Mr. Adam Bird. Mr. Bird was instrumental in my development as a basketball player. Mr. Bird, like my middle school coaches, taught hard work and teamwork, uh, which was needed at that time in my life. Uh, being an underclassman, when you get called up and you're a freshman and you get called up to go to the JV, uh, that doesn't always sit well with the uh, older guys that you're playing with. And we had a, a little bit of issues with that. Uh, Mr. Bird was uh, very good and got us to uh, play as a team and put all that stuff aside. Uh, he applied the first layer of glue that was the 1995 basketball champs. And thank you for everything you've done for me. Uh, in eighth grade, in freshman football, JV and varsity baseball, I was honored to play for Mr. Greg Hawkins. His leadership and class uh, that he stood for is the New Richmond way. And I've got to tell a story about uh, about this, and Mike Mike's here tonight. So, uh, but uh, one time I don't even know who we were playing. Mike, you might remember. This is a funny story, but uh, it'll show you the point. Uh, Mike's up to bat. I don't know who we were playing, and he hits a bomb over in Death Valley at the old uh, school. I mean, he absolutely crushed it. And if you uh, were a left-handed hitter. It was a hard, it was a hard uh, home run to hit because that's the deepest part of that old field. And Mike went around the bases and he was hooting and hollering. He was happy, you know. He uh, he hit a he hit a bomb. Well, when we come in, we, we won that game. And I don't know if you remember this, Coach, but uh, we all had to go out the uh, outfield. He said, "What are we going to do out here, Coach? We're going to run. Why are we running?" He said, because, you know, Mike, you got to act like Mike. You need to act like you uh, have been there before and done this before. You can't go around the bases hooting and hollering, showing the other team up. He said, well, Coach, I never have hit a home run before. <laughs> I always thought that was a, a good story. I tell it from time to time again. But uh, Mike happens to be here. He's my good friend. Uh, let me see here. I'm, I'm skipping around here. Uh, so, Mr. Hawkins, thank you for all your support and uh, all your work you did with my scholarship for Wright State. Uh, Mr. Brian Benzinger, I only had him for one game in JV baseball uh, my sophomore year, but his coaching speaks for itself when you look up at the baseball banner in the gym. His character and class that he's taught is also the New Richmond way. And I also wanted to thank him uh, for nominating me for this wonderful honor. In football, I had the legendary Mr. Ron Bird. And like all my coaches, he taught toughness and teamwork. Now, I, was, I didn't play football. Uh, my, I played my freshman year. I didn't play my sophomore year. I played my junior year. And I didn't play my senior year. But I have a good story about Mr. Bird uh, that shows you how tough he really is. Uh, when I would play baseball all summer, I would slide and I would have a cut that would just keep reopening. And it, it, by the time football season came, it was a really good cut, you know. Well, I'm tall, and as you know, uh, my football pants, the knee pads really didn't cover my knees. I never could find a football pair of pants that really fit me. 
But uh, one time, I, you know, I don't know what we were going, you know, tackling or something. I busted it open. I had blood just running down my leg. And Mr. Bird always had a little roll of athletic tape on his hip tied to his belt loop. I said, Coach, I need, uh, I need to go get this bandaged up. He said, come over here, kid. He took the tape out, sticky side down, stuck it on the coat, and just wrapped it around my leg, ripped it off. He said, now you're good to go. Back when, he said, back when we played, uh, we played with broken bones, broken fingers, and I do believe it. Uh, I was so lucky to have Mr. Boone, and, uh, Mr. Joe Moon in varsity basketball. Teamwork was what he stressed, and that's what he got. I always thought it was really neat that, uh, and I don't know if other coaches do this, but, you know, he would always have the team over before games, after school, we would go to his house. Mrs. Moon would always uh, cook so many good uh, meals. We would watch Hoosiers or Blue Chips and just cut up and just hang out as a team. I always thought that was really special. Uh, Mr. Moon taught us never to give up no matter what. In my junior year, all his wishes and commands all paid off with a championship. We were not better athletes in Hillsboro, but we were a better team. Uh, Mr. Moon was tough on us. At the beginning of every, every year, he would sit down and we'd have team rules that we would sign. If you broke them, they were enforced. Uh, trust me, I know. I've been on the bad side of that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I want to thank my basketball mom, Mrs. Pam Moon. I remember my last basketball game at the Shoemaker Center. You were the first person that, uh, the first shoulder I cried on uh, when I left the uh, locker room. I knew it was all over and what a sad day that was. I knew I would never play basketball again. As an athlete at New Richmond, it's so amazing the amount of support you get from everyone. A lot of the same faces that supported me when I was here, you still see here supporting the athletes of today. All my coaches influenced me in so many ways. And now I try to pass those things down to the youth basketball teams I coach, future Lions. Mom and Dad, thank you for everything you've done for me. All the time you've invested in money. I know how much time that really involves as I have three kids that keep me very, very busy. Dad, you're my hero. Your example of what a man is supposed to be is a very tough one for me to follow. Your hardworking traits and just being loyal uh, to the company that you worked for is some just a couple of things I admire you for. The husband, father, and friend that you are is what I try to be. I could go on and on about this. I always tell my boys that if I can be a fraction of the man that you are, then I would be a great father and man. You're my best friend, Dad, and I love you and Mom with my whole heart. Shannon, although I didn't know you when I was at this high school, I met you the summer after I graduated at Trevor Graves' house. <laughs> Club Graves. <laughs> Thank you for giving me three beautiful children. You are an excellent mother and wife. You have raised my kids from the time they were born, putting yourself last. It is true that a man is only as good as his wife, and you truly are my better half. Jacob, Lizzie, and Luke, being your father is the best thing in the whole world. You three mean the world to me, and I love you with my whole heart. Uncle Tim and Aunt Sharon, thank you for all your support. You are like second parents to me, and I really believe that. You guys have always been there for me through ups and downs, many downs. David, watching you play basketball and baseball made me so proud. You're my baby brother, but yet I look up to you. All the adversity you've had to endure and the way you've handled it made me very proud to be your big brother. I know with my whole heart that if you did not get hurt, we would all be watching you pitch in the major leagues. You had what it took. I played with professional athletes that made it to the big leagues, and you have too. There's no doubt about it, you had exactly what it took. Thanks for making the arrangements to be here today for me. Brandy. Thank you for all your support over the years. I know you've been drugged to basketball and baseball games your whole life. That had to have been hard. And finally, I just uh, like the Hall of Famer, Mr. Tom Beheimer said last year, God bless America and God bless the Richmond High School. Thank you.
Thanks, John. Great job. He, uh, I think he really touched on something that the more I'm here, the more I just truly believe it. He talked about a list of coaches at New Richmond. Um, and I hope you folks understand. I've been around the block a few hundred times. And we are so blessed to have a history of coaches at this school that most schools can't even compare. Our coaches are unbelievable that we have had here. The past ones, the ones we have now, and the young ones we have that are growing with it. I don't know how we got lucky that cat, but the ones that I have known from the Greg Hawkins and the John Calebs and the Joe Moons and the Warren McConnells and the Denny Hopewells, uh, you know, Ron Birds, it, it's unbelievable the, the coaches that we've had at this place. Uh, I'm amazed every time I listen to our former athletes talk about their coaches. Uh, we're really blessed. You don't get that a lot of places. Next off is Dr. Jay Henry, and his presenter will be his father, Herb Henry. First of all, I would like to say that I am very, I appreciate very much the honor that he is going to have bestowed on my son. And uh, it's often been said that it takes a village to raise children. And this is a testament to a family that's part of that village that has been a real part of this community. And I coached in your league down there. Refereeing down at the junior high, and truly, uh, this village provides the the challenge to test and build kids' character. That's, that's all about. Uh, I'm going to not get into specifics because uh, when you reach a certain age and you look back, generalities is what we deal with. Most of <laughs> First of all, does anybody remember the last time it was this cold? <laughs> Give me the year. 77. 77, we walked across the river in Ohio. Some of us did, I didn't, but some people tried it and made it, and I'm glad they did. But the point is that during that winter, with all that going on, at the beginning of that winter, I was here, and We've come, you know, it's cold now, and we come full circle back again. And uh, Jason was boring during that winter. And I got to spend a lot of time with him that winter because we were out of school quite a bit that time. And uh, when you look back, you see things come full circle. For instance, in 76, when I was teaching here, I was lucky enough to have a young man in my classroom. That year, the Reds won the pennant. In 1990, that young man caught the last out of that game. This village caught that child to make it to that level of com competition. So I'm not saying that everything has to freeze over for people to be recognized. <laughs> but I'm saying that we look on, we come to this place in time, and we look back on exceptional things and achievement that people did in the physical realm, in athletics, and you say, that was something we need to crystallize, put up, because that's an example for other people coming along. So, in general, I look back on, on Jason's athletics, and, and I see, basically, when you look back, and I did some coaching, and, and I was an endurance athlete, and, and, and work with my limitations as well. And I know that it take, there are certain things that athletes have coming into it. You have just six characteristics to work with. You have speed, you have strength, you have agility, you have flexibility, and you have endurance. And sometimes size helps it out of that life. <laughs> So, when you have those, you take those abilities and you practice and you train and if you put your ladder on the right sport and the right, the right wall, and sometimes it's more than one wall, you can have you know, all kinds of sports, you have multiple sports. But if you're lucky enough to choose the right sport and dedicate yourself to it and, and work with the strength, with the gifts that you have, the talents you have, you can reach levels that 
Some people can't. It just takes the, the time and the effort. Now, when I look back at Jay, and I look at, I'm going to make these comments as an endurance athlete because I, I love endurance athletics and I like track and field. And when I look back at, at that, Jay was basically average in every one of those things, except for maybe two. He was above average in strength, not overly, and he would endure. He could endure. Okay, so you take those two and you can endure the training it takes to endure. Because it, that you have to build training, you start with a base and you have to have a lot of base to build endurance. And you build and find that to a point. And that point has to come at the right time in the season to achieve athletic or endurance excellence. Now, when a school year starts, everybody starts out in a different sport. Cross country goes one way, and you have agile athletes that run with endurance through the woods every day. You have all kinds of football, basketball, all kinds of ball. But in the spring, there is a sport that I love. You leave all the ball and, and apparatus behind. Everybody gathers in the spring on a track that runs around, and we work with these basic skills. And there are coaches that know how to put those teams together, and take those skills uh, and the raw skills of talent and, and, and show that a team can be built from individual efforts. And, uh, and Warren McConnell could do that. He could take kids from football, he could take kids from swimming, he could take kids from, you name the sport. And he could take those strength, all of those characteristics, quickness, strength, speed, agility, flexibility, and he could turn them into a winning team. Now, so Jason could endure the training and build on his strength. And I often talk to, talk to Warren about this. I said, Warren, there was a lot of effort to win in that run. Why don't we get some more points for endurance? Warren would say, well, those kids, other kids worked just as hard. They had talent and speed and strength. And so we all get, we all, all the points get added together for all those abilities. And so I really enjoyed those eight years that I was able to watch Jason run. And uh, I'm going to let him go into the particulars about the things that happened and the people who he needs to thank for that. But. Uh, I really appreciate the honor you have bestowed upon him. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Jake Henry earned four varsity letters in track and cross country during his career at New Richmond High School, which included a second place finish in the 3,200 meter run at the 1995 Division II state track meet. He was a uh, Division II district and regional champion at 3,200 meters in 1995, also a district champion and state qualifier at 1,600 meters. Henry was named to the All Cincinnati and Southern Buckeye Athletic and Academic Conference All-Star teams and track and was a four-time conference All-Star in cross country. Henry was a valedictorian of his 1995 Richmond High School class and went on to run Division I track and cross country at Wake Forest University where he graduated summa cum laude in 1999 with a degree in biology and a minor in chemistry. He earned a Master's of Science in Biology degree from Wake Forest in 2001 and a Ph.D. in Exercise and Sports Sciences in 2008 from Oregon State University. He is currently a professor with lecture courses in anatomical kinesiology, biomechanics, exercise physiology, and motor learning and control. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jason Penry for inclusion into the 2014 Hall of Fame class of New Richmond High School. One of the, one of the benefits of being an endurance athlete is you have a big set of lungs. You know, 
things that you don't get to show off. And I always kind of wish that I could be a, you know, a, someone who jumped really high or ran really fast um, because people saw that and thought it was really cool. And uh, when you said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I, I run 10,000 meters. This was in college. And, well, what, 10,000 meters? That's 25 laps around the track. And then they would say, oh, I'll see you later. I'm going to make a hot dog. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of like Dad said, you, 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 you pick your, you have a certain amount, of t certain amount of trait that you can spend on a particular physical activity, and you pick it, and hopefully it matches up with what you do well. And I, I always could endure relatively well. I'm just going to go without this. I teach, and I have a pretty loud voice, so I can do this pretty well. Um, I'm going to say my thank yous first because I don't want to forget my thank yous at the end. I'll get excited as I'm talking. I don't want to do that. Um, I want to thank uh, my wife, uh, Julie Ealing Penry, um, who's also a graduate here from New Richmond High School and uh, who's been supportive all the way through. Uh, I don't think she knows. Wow, I didn't expect it choked up over that. Um, I don't think she knows how much uh, she supported me over the years. Um, <coughs> Uh, she started dating me my senior year of high school, and uh, the sort of perspective that she gave me in that last year when I really uh, achieved, I think, what brought me to this point was, is, is immeasurable. So I, I, I thank her for that, and also for um, our son, who uh, neither one of them can make it today. It's a long trip across the country, and uh, uh, particularly with a guy who's a year and a half old. Um, they like to play with things that they shouldn't be playing with on the plane, so it's it's good to do that at home. But he is the thanks to them, and then thanks to my family, um, my father and my mother, and uh, my extended family who, um, uh, through the years, I you know I've I started playing sports before I really was playing sports. You know, my, my brother who couldn't be here today, um, I convinced him that a softball was actually soft, so we could play it in the front yard. Um, he wouldn't pitch it to me if he actually knew it was hard, so I convinced him it was hard and lined it off his hip, and he would not play with me anymore. Um, uh, my, my cousins, who we, we played tag and other types of sports, um, uh, just and the support that they've given me over the years. So having, a, having a strong family unit and knowing that you can you know, count on your family for support, you know, is one of those things that um, really can help see you through when you, when you don't have, uh, when you don't have it yourself, so that's, that's something else. Um, and then also just kind of a thank you to New Richmond in general. Um, I've always kind of liked being from New Richmond. It's, it's been, you know, it's one of those things where you never think you're going to get emotional, you know, and I didn't think I was going to. Um, I like being from New Richmond. I really do. I, it's, people ask me where I'm from, and I, I tell them I'm from a town of around two to 3,000 people. And um, there are people in my profession that have been combed for years and years and years to go into high levels of academics and um, have gone to private schools for years and years and years. and. Uh, has brought them to this point. And I really like to say that I'm from New Richmond and that New Richmond made me what I was. I'm very proud to be part of this community and uh, I wear it with, with pride. It really is, it's good to be from, from here. So thank you to, to New Richmond, I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted, uh, it's kind of funny that John, John talks, talked about uh, playing with, uh, with Adam. Um, Mr. Bird and uh, John and I were all on a team together. Uh, my soft, my must have been my sophomore year here. It was your freshman year, and I didn't know that I was I was that mean to you. That I was, <laughs> that, um, that it was that I we caused you so much distress, or at least I did. Um, John, John came up, and uh, I had been the starting center for a long time. Um, I was not very tall. I could not jump very high. Um, I could shoot free throws, take charges, and, uh, and pass fairly well, which are things that are not prized very well as a center. Um, and John came along, and John had, had he could shoot the lights out. So um, 
I was, I was, uh, I was told that I was to toughen John up. I was, I, 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 I spent a good deal of time fouling John. That was my sophomore basketball season. I fouled John a lot. And John was not happy about lots of those fouls. And I'm glad that we can smile at each other now. It really is, it really is nice. Um, one, one thing that stands out in my mind from that year was that uh, something had happened over the span of uh, the school year, and we were not allowed to stay after school for practice. We all had to go home and come back. And for uh, I, my parents, were my, I didn't have my own transportation, so my parents were my transportation back to school, and they were working. So it was hard for them to get me to, to school back for practice at exactly the right time. If the traffic was off or something happened, it was, it, I was late from time to time. And Adam had a rule that we had to run the number of laps for the number of minutes that we were late. And um, I, uh, I took to that, I think, with a little bit too much joy <laughs> for, um, for their tastes. Because they would, I'd be, you know, at 15 minutes later, whatever, and Adam would say, okay, you've got to run 15 laps. And I would go out there and I'd try to run as fast as I could around the gym. Because Warren would have us run workouts in the spring where he put desks out around the gym and we'd run around as fast as we could and I was trying to replicate that and I would wave to people as I went around. And it was told to me that, and I'm not sure if, if you said this Adam or someone said this to you, that, that we couldn't, we can't punish him that way, that's not going to work. We're going to have to make him sit. Uh, uh, so you know, I, I heard that and I knew I was kind of headed in the right direction. Track spoke to me. I, um, I would leave practice after, um, I, I had, Warren had worked on me and told me I needed to keep my conditioning up through the winter and I took that to heart. Um, and after practice I would go down to uh, the track here um, in the winter in the dark and I would run three miles after practice most every day. Um, it was very tempting to uh, go to the shower. The showers were very warm and that was nice and after practice that was good. Um, but. Um, Warren had impressed upon me that I needed to continue to work through the winter, and uh, I put my mileage in, and I was, I'm, you know, in terms of being a, a quality endurance athlete, you have to be a little bit crazy, and um, I logged everything I've done for the path, my athletic endeavors for 21 years, so if anyone really wants to know, and Rick, Rick might want to write this down for the Claremont, you know, history if you want to know, I, I can tell you how much I ran that winter. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it kind of grew from there. I, I, I wasn't ever sure that I was going to love athletics and get into endurance athlete, athletics as much as I did. Um, I always kind of thought of myself as academics first and, uh, and never really gave myself that sort of uh, chance. But there were, there were, you know, every so often you have a light that, that shows the way, and I had several races along the way where it, it seemed like I was going to um, be able to carry that forward. And um, uh, when in particular uh, was against our our, our present um, middle school principal, um, Courtney Lilly, uh, who was a quality distance runner for Eastern Brown, uh, and. Uh, he had a, had a characteristic of, he would try to break you in races by running very fast and then very slow. And then when you caught up to him and he'd run very fast, he'd run very fast again. So you, would, you wouldn't be able to run at a very constant pace. You were always trying to catch up to him. And he did this to me all through my career, and I was always trying to catch up to him. And my senior year at uh, our home relay meet, um, John... I mean, uh, uh, Courtney. Uh, Courtney was doing the same thing and I was waiting for him. So he did it almost every lap and on the last lap he came back to me and I was waiting for him and I put the hammer down and he, he couldn't respond and I finished, that was the first time I ever had beaten Courtney and uh, um, it really ch it changed my perspective. He was someone that I had thought that I um, wasn't going to be able to defeat and in a second it had changed and um, 
I don't know. It just, you know, one of those things that you don't think that actually believing something makes it true, but it does. And that was, a, a, it, my paradigm shifted. Um, and Warren helped me with that. Warren had a way of um, letting you believe things that were not so hard, that these were things that other people had done, and that you could accomplish it too. Um, and these are all things, all lessons that I've tried to carry through into my, my career. I, you know, I, I, coming out of enrichment, I thought I was going to go into medicine. And um, I had a natural affinity for teaching. And my father um, tried his best. I think he's, he kind of knew all along, I think, that he thought I was going to get into teaching. But he wanted to make sure that I came to it for the right reasons. So um, he kind of... He pushed me to other things, and when I came back to teaching, I think he was very happy about it. Um, but it was one of those, it, you know, I, I had an affinity for it, and I, I try to carry a lot of these lessons that I've, that I've learned from athletics. Um, you know, believe in my, my students. You know, I have, I have students that come to me every day and um, want to know how to succeed in their academics. And their, the lessons that you learn in the athletic realm are really no different from those that you apply in the academic realm. Um, if you believe something enough and you're willing to work hard for it, it will at least improve. And if you work extremely hard at it and you have some affinity for it, you will excel. Um, it's, it takes work and it takes belief, but it will happen. Um, to be a quality teacher, the number one thing you can't do. What's the, what's the worst thing you can do as a coach with a star athlete? What's the worst thing you can do? You can cause them to give up. You can break them. You can recruit. You can recruit a quality athlete. You can bring in someone who can shoot the lights out, who can run off the track. But if you break them like a horse who no longer wants to run, you have failed as a coach, and it's the same way with teaching. And I, you know, my real push, you know, as a as a, as an educator, is to make sure that I apply these lessons that I've learned, you know, to 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 let my students find what they're good at, to allow them to time to grow. We push hard in my academic endeavors, and then we we rest, and we push hard, and we rest, and we believe, and hopefully at the end we master whatever we are trying to do. So, um, I really, I really never thought that coming out of, you know, grade school that I would, I would stand before you as a nourishment high school athletic hall of fame inductee. I always thought of myself as a little bit of a nerd. Um, perhaps a little bit more than a little bit. Of a nerd. Um, but I, I, I learned things along the way. I really found what I what I love to do. I enjoyed the process of, of endurance athletics, um, and I'm I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to to stand before you today. And I really do appreciate this honor. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. Uh, our next inductee is Mr. Dennis Hopewell, and the presenter is Mr. Bill Harris. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. You know, it's like I got my snowblower out for the fifth time in eight days. <laughs> but, man, it, it's going to be nice to talk about baseball and track and soccer. <laughs> and when you talk about soccer at New Richmond High School, there are two names that come to mind, Mr. Joe Moon, who started the program, and Danny Hopewell, who saved it. When Joe hung up his boots to focus on basketball, the boys' soccer team went through some turmoil. They had four different coaches in four years. Players were in the program were left without focus, direction, or accountability. In stepped Danny Hopewell, an old NCO, retired cop, guy who used to spend his summers busting Broncos. Not the Western Brown kind, that came later. <laughs> the team got focused, direction, accountability real quick, and his players loved him for it. He took a collection of individuals, made them a team. The sum was greater than the parts. Finally, they had somebody to put those parts 
and turn it into a machine. They're good young men. Needed somebody to believe in them, their sport, their team. To stick with them. To accept their loyalty and to give it right back. Together, that team won the first of ten consecutive league titles. Rick Crawford told me once that that's the third longest streak in the history of Claremont County. Winning the SBC became a tradition at New Richmond. That's what they put on the t-shirts. And every year that list of championships got longer. Danny put New Richmond soccer on the map, map and he put a target on his players' backs. The champ is always the team to beat. The team that everybody else gets pumped up to play. And that desire to take them down gets stronger when the team repeats. You can imagine what it does when the team three beats and four beats and then wins again and again and again. Danny and his players relish that role. They wanted everybody's best shot. They expected nothing less. And if you took the field against them, you were going to get theirs, and it would send you really. When Danny had the boys' soccer team on such solid ground that nobody could screw it up, he turned it over to me. <laughs> but just to be sure, he set me up with one of his original players, Sean Bach, as my JV coach. I have two Coach of the Year plaques on my mantle, two league titles, thanks to those two guys and the players that I inherited from Danny. Danny went on to coach the girls' team for two more years, leading them to a league title, finishing second the other year. Both years winning Coach of the Year. I don't need to tell you how hard it is to win Coach of the Year without winning the league. If that doesn't say you're the best around, I don't know what does. My time as Danny's assistant was the most enjoyable of my 15 years in coaching high school soccer. <coughs> I'd been a varsity coach for seven years. I thought I knew a little something about the game. And I started working for Danny Hopewell. I, I learned something every day. I got to play good cop to his bad cop. I got to see good boys become even better young men. And there are two things in those early days that stand out in my mind. In my first year with Danny, we had 10 different varsity players score a goal before anyone scored, second, or scored their second. And guys were really proud of that, as they should have been. I, I don't think they keep records for that kind of thing, but I'm sure that it's unparalleled. All anybody cared about was doing his job. From the first guy on the field to the last guy on the bench, they knew they were going to be part of something bigger than themselves, an important part. Not just a part, not the whole thing, but a part of something big. Danny was a master at getting meaningful player time from that hardworking kid who just didn't have the same skills get said. There was no garbage time at the end of the game. Almost invariably, every kid got minutes in the first half was when the game was on the line. I don't remember many games that were on the line in the second half. And the second is from a summer practice. Danny just talked to the boys about looking out for each other, staying out of trouble as River Days approached. One of the players stepped up and said, everybody come to my house, we'll swim at the pool. Everybody. Not the seniors, not the cool kids, not the stars of the team, not the varsity. Everybody. That's the Denny Hopewell effect. Everybody counts. Everybody's important. Everybody gave their best and deserves the same from their teammates. That's tough to beat, and that's Denny Hopewell. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the greatest honor in my sport career to present the eight-time league champion, nine-time SBAAC Coach of the Year, Mr. Dennis Hopewell. Denny Hopewell inherited a boys soccer program in turmoil when he joined New Richmond High School as an in-school suspension monitor and soccer coach in 1998. When I came into Richmond, they told me that if I won three games, everyone would be happy, said Hopewell, who brought more than 20 years of coaching experience with him to New Richmond. Hopewell, who had coached select soccer teams for 20 years, had higher expectations for his soccer teams as a sergeant in the Air Force and retired Madeira police detective. His discipline, work ethic, and dedication helped transform the program into a dominant force in the Southern Buckeye Athletic and Academic Conference. His 1998 team went 8-4 and four and won the first of seven straight SBAC championships. Hopewell was asked to perform the same magic to the New Richmond girls teams when he switched coaching duties in 2005 and 2006. His girls won the SBAC title in 2005 and finished second in 2006, the only year he did not win a championship. Hopewell, who accomplished it all without select soccer feeding programs, was named Southern Buckeye Coach of the Year nine times. Denny took a program that was in turmoil, cleaned it up, and made it the dominant force in the SBAC 
said New Richmond teacher Bill Harris, who followed Hopewell as the boys' varsity soccer coach. He developed players who were disciplined, hardworking, and team-oriented. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Dennis Hopewell into the, the New Richmond Lions Sports Hall of Fame. First of all, I'd like to thank all the other members of the Hall of Fame. It's a great honor, great privilege. Joe Moon, who started the program, also thank you. When I first started here, 1998, Jim T. Garden called. We need a coach. You're retired. Come. Bob Payne called me in the office, interviewed me. He said, I'm going to be honest with you, you're getting a whole bunch of knuckleheads. <laughs> he said, if you win three games, I'll be happy. So no pressure. I said, okay, why not? Jim T. Garner is a friend of mine, best person I ever knew. <coughs> he said, give it a go. When I left here, in the back was a bus driver. And I knew the bus driver because her daughter played select soccer for me. She said, Denny, are you really going to be the boys' soccer coach? I said, well, yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. She said, you're nuts. She said, we won't transport them unless you can give them behave. I said, uh-oh. So all the way home, I'm thinking, what did T. Gurdon just do to me? First day of practice, open tryouts, we had 18 boys show up for two teams. Normally you have 15 on each team. I was short some players. We started asking around. Finally we had 23 enough for two teams. First three years I coached both JV and varsity and I helped T-Garden train the girls. The first year 98 was the first year the girls ever won league and the boys won league since Joe Moon had had it. We told the boys if they practice, you can win. I was lucky. I had people like the Bach family who supplied me for the next six years. <laughs> <laughs> I had the Wessels, I had the Etzels, I had the Beheimers. And when they say New Richmond is a family, they're not kidding. Because out of the first 18 kids I had, they were all related. <laughs> Either cousins or not. I mean, and then when we finally picked it up, I'm going, I'm not sure what I'm getting into. But with guys like Sean Bach, who was Mr. Harris's JV coach, he'll tell you. We have one rule, do what I tell you, behave, take care of each other, and win. If the other guy gets in your way, knock him down. <laughs> and they did. These guys worked. They got to the point, during the game, Sean, who was defense, would yell, Denny, we're going to double stop her. Andy Pierce, to most of you, my nose on Channel 5 now. Back then I weighed maybe 120 pounds. <laughs> if he turned sideways, we weren't sure he was there. We had guys like Sean, Wessel, Etzel, would go out and recruit for us. The second year we had 35 kids show up. I was really happy. One league then. I don't think after that we had a problem. Matter of fact, we had a problem with people showing up, but we never cut anybody. They kept on trying harder and harder. I think Sean's second year, we were undefeated, period. After 2000, 
won, we won six years in the league undefeated. The most goals ever scored against us was two. We went the fourth year, five games in a row, never being scored on. When we played Western Brown, who was only in the third year, the first 15 minutes of the game, the score was 8 to nothing. And we just pulled back. But everybody got in. And then I came up, and Mr. Mallow at the time asked me to become an ISI teacher. I'm thinking, what is an ISI teacher? I came from Indian Hill High School. We didn't have that. <laughs> and Miss Blankenship at the time was doing it. They talked me into and I started coming here. The boys would tell you, one rule, if you break a rule, admit to it. If you're man enough to do it, man enough to admit to it. The second year, we lost the whole JV team because they did something they weren't supposed to do. And I told them before they talked to anybody, if you deny it, and I know you did it, we have a problem. The boy, the teams on their own got together and got these guys. Don't ruin our program. They played because they wanted to win. If it wasn't for the box, the Wessel Etzels, the Heimers. I'd never been as successful. They played because they wanted to. The girls took up the same thing. The girls used to practice with the boys. We brought the girls team over to practice with the boys team. We got a lot of flack from people. No, none parents, of course. And that was one thing we learned here, or I've learned. I wish I came here before I was I had people like Mr. Mallet, Mr. Bird, Mr. Harris. People who lead. I remember Joe when he taught here. And the teachers we had here. I've learned so much. Good and bad. Mostly good. In fact, all good. I was a lot easier after I'd been here for a while and learned. I'm sure, you know, some of my early players will tell you there's one thing Denny could do well, is I could yell. You could hear me from the stadium up to the back here with no problem. Matter of fact, one even said, and I won't mention the name of it, you yelled louder than Mr. Bird. There's a, a sequence here tonight, Mr. Bird. You notice you're coming up in all of this, you know? Um, but it was great. You know, I wouldn't trade my time here for anything in the world. Even after I quit coaching, I love it. We have people like the gentleman sitting here, and the gentleman out there, Mr. Dunn, you know, I they've led led me, Brian McMonagle. I remember him before he left here. And then came back as a teacher. And he's added so much um, that this is a family. We do take care of each other. Even after you retire, I've got people calling. Hey, how you doing, Denny? That was a, that was probably the only time Mr. Bird and I ever disagreed was my players. You ready? He called me Denny. Can't have that. You're Mr. Hoopo. Guys, you've got to call me Mr. Hoopo. Mr. Bird has told me now twice. <laughs> And lo and behold, be in the cafeteria. Hey, Danny, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> Mr. Bird, it's Mr. Hopewell. <laughs> At that point, I just went, Mr. Bird, give up. <laughs> <laughs> I think even to the end, end, it was still Mr. Hopewell. <laughs> or Coach, one or the other. But really, it's truly an honor to be here, be a part of New Return. Um, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you. I just want to thank all of you for being here tonight on a special night uh, for these three gentlemen.
there so much goes into something like this. Uh, some people I would just like to thank real quick, and then we'll get you out of here. Jim Robinson, uh, who had his yearbook class come in and help do all this. His student council came in and helped do all this. Uh, Leanne Bach and Becky Lewis, who every year, um, if it's not for them, I don't know how in the world any of this gets done. I just stand back and say, would you just get out of the way? And I just always just get out of the way because I'm scared of them. Uh, and then if you did not fall in the parking lot, it is a miracle, for one. And the fact that you didn't was because of the job that our maintenance crew, Roof Dog, and Al did. They have been here, I don't know how long this morning, but they got this whole parking lot and it just kept snowing and they just kept plowing. Rufus would come in and say, we got three more feet of drifts. He'd go back out and plow again, throw more salt down. What a crew. Uh, they were unbelievable so that we could have this tonight. And I truly appreciate them. Our Hall of Fame committee, uh, it's always every year a tough, tough selection. And we just got great candidates here. And that's a great problem to have. And we limit them to how many will go in each year. And we've got great candidates, and it's, it's tough. And I know we don't always make people happy, but it's not because that they don't take a ton of time uh, looking and selecting and spending time on it. Uh, Adam was out all day today driving roads, trying to make sure we could have this thing. He's calling Bethel superintendent. Um, I, I tell you what, I don't, you can't work for a better man than what I work for. And the guy got this thing raised, he got it going, or we couldn't have had this. And I truly appreciate all that he did. Uh, I've got one thing to do that, that I'm going to embarrass somebody. I'm not sorry, but I'm going to embarrass them because of how proud I am of them. Uh, Nate, will you stand up for a minute? I want to tell you guys this, and this is going to sound really bad coming out of me, and I hope you don't fire me for this. But I walked down the pool one day a few weeks ago, and this dude was down there in a Speedo. <laughs> Number one, I ain't ever going to be in a Speedo. <laughs> but if you know the story to this guy, he has kicked leukemia right in the hind end. And my goodness, does he look great. <laughs> I'm so proud of him, and I know... Uh, <laughs> Becky and, and Judy Midler and Joe and all of them, just every time this guy shows up, it's just uh, Melissa Cornett sending out pictures, look who I'm coaching with, and it's Nate Kramer. And it's just, uh, wow, you're talking about doing your heart good. Uh, so I'm really proud of Nate. I hope I don't embarrass you, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, please encourage other people to come to this. Uh, I love the fact that when our uh, people that's in the Hall of Fame come back and support it, it's just a great thing. Please uh, keep encouraging that. Please nominate worthy people that you know of. A lot of times people get mad and they say, how come so-and-so hasn't come in? I don't know everybody. Uh, and if you don't nominate them, you know, they're not going to go in. So please nominate people that you know that's worthy. Uh, we're trying to get even the people that's been here in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Uh, so please nominate them. Um, if you've noticed one of the things that they have allowed me to do, it's going to take me a long time to get it done. Uh, I'm probably going to be retired before it ever finishes, so the next dude's going to have to do it, is we've started a thing out there trying to put all the winners of the SBAC, the team trophies, up on the wall. It's going to be a long process. Uh, it's kind of slow to do it. I'm trying to go back and get pictures, and uh, pretty soon some of the black and whites are going to be going up. Um, so if you have any team pictures that uh, we may be able to borrow or use, Jim Robson does a great job the time that he's been here. But as we go back further, we may not have them. Uh, so I may be calling on some of you if you happen to have a team picture when you were here uh, to look at that. And the only other thing is if uh, uh, there's a couple of asked about paying and I just didn't have time to do it. If you have not got a chance to pay for the meal and you need to, uh, see Mrs. Lewis back there. We can take care of that. If not, uh, thank you so much for being here. This is awesome. One more time, please stand and recognize our three new inductees.